I want to talk about how to create dynamics in your track. We're going to be going over a track here that I'm working on. Uh, the song is called Bad Timing. I'm still producing it. This is for my own side project. It's called Palma. And the genre is known as Chill House. You can use these dynamic things we're going to talk about in rock, in, in pop, and electronic music. They're just fundamentals of, of how you would create dynamics, peaks and valleys to keep things interesting. I want to talk about four things. It doesn't mean that these are the only four things to create dynamics in each song, but there are four things that I do in almost every song that I produce. Just to give you the context, I'm going to play from the introduction just past the chorus so you can understand where I'm coming from. If you don't want to listen to the song, just to just skip to the next section in the video. They're all timestamped in the description. <laughs> The first thing is to think of your song in chunks. You have an intro chunk. You have a verse chunk. You have a pre-chorus chunk. And then you have a chorus chunk. This helps me a lot just to think of my song in chunks or sections like this because then I can take a bird's eye perspective on it. Visually, I can see the chunks. But also when I'm producing, I'm thinking, okay, what should I produce in the intro? What should I produce in the verse? What should I produce in the pre-chorus? How am I going to make each chunk a little bit different so it has dynamic? The second thing is a little more tactical. The first thing was a bit kind of high level theoretical, I guess. Now let's get right into the nitty gritty. Use the different elements you have in a drum set. So typically standard drums, you'd have a kick drum, a snare drum, and hi-hats. You probably have some tom rolls here and there. Let's talk about those three elements kick, snare, and hi-hat. Notice there's no drums in the introduction. So already in the first verse, we have dynamic because we have a kick drum. So you can see the kick come in, comes in right here. Just a simple kick drum. Now notice in the next chunk, the next section here, the pre-chorus, we have a snap. And a snap is going to create a lot of dynamic because it signifies like your backbeat. So it gives the listener a sense of like, okay, this is the movement of the song. Me in the cold, word we could have and that's all it takes is a snap just to create that dynamic. Second part of the pre-chunk, we take out the, the kick drum. You're not adding anything. Taking away equally uh, creates dynamic as well. You don't always have to think of adding. You can also think about it as taking things away. So we take away the kick drum so it has that impact again in the chorus. Every time you post a picture you're in, I don't regret one single inch of trying. You just head back. In the chorus, we add a huge rhythmic section. So these three pieces here, hats, shakers, and another clap to layer onto the snap. So this adds a lot of, of, of movement, a lot of rhythm, right? So immediately when we take everything out and leave the kick drum in for the verse, there's a, oh, there, it brings the song right back down. So think about it, kick, snare, um, snaps, snare, claps. Use those elements by starting with one, adding another, taking away one, adding all three of them, maybe taking away another one. You have a lot of options, even with just those three elements. The third thing to create dynamic would be to add instruments over time without overloading your listener with information. I hear a lot in the songs that you that you guys get me to listen to is that there's too much information too quickly. There's not enough buildup where, um, for instance, maybe you have an introduction, a verse, but then the pre-chorus you add three or four instruments and then it's too much information for me as a listener to even subconsciously digest and consume because it's just, it doesn't feel right. Notice in these, in the sections of this song, 
We have an introduction, kind of builds a bit of curiosity with this um, vocal chop. Very easy to digest. Every time we get too close. Then it's just vocal, kick drum, and guitar. Into the next section, we are adding quite a lot of stuff here. We're adding the snaps, we're adding harmonies, and we're adding piano. But harmonies are a nice thing to add because they're just supporting the vocal, which we're already familiar with. So really, you can think of the big things that we're, we're adding here are only the, is this DX7. Sits on the, on the bass, the low end of the song. A big thing that is creating the suspense too, which is very popular in chill house music like this, would be this sweep, which is just a sample in Splice. It's a cashmere sweep. It's a very popular sample to use. This type of sweep movement dynamic change doesn't always work in, in different genres, but you can do similar things by reversing guitars that you have in the song, reversing pianos you have in the song, and maybe lowering it in volume, tucking a little bit behind, and using that to sweep into a different section. And then in the chorus, it's really impactful because we, we have this sub bass that's coming in, plus the rhythm from the, the drums, guitar and synth melody here. So we have the, these melodies. See, just with the melodies and the bass. Now we have the keys. Here's a bad example, or a good example of what not to do. If I added the piano here in the pre-chorus, if I added the bass guitar, um, oh, this track is frozen, let's unfreeze that. So for example, if we just start from the verse, notice how the pre-chorus feels wrong. Every time we get too close, I'm breaking the rules, always scared of letting go. Wasn't like this way before, what can I do when you leave me in the cold? listener go step by step by adding things or taking away things and then you're going to make each section more impactful fourth thing to create dynamic and suspense in your track is to have each instrument be dynamic on their own as their own standing instrument that means that you're spending the time recording things well like we're getting a really good guitar recording so you're your performance of recording the guitar is dynamic. You're playing some parts a little softer. You're playing some parts a little louder. You, you're carrying that energy through the performance, and that is dynamic when you're listening to the guitar. Now, this can only go so far if you are drawing MIDI notes in. For example, if we look at this MIDI uh, DX7 here, which is the synth, then your velocity is going to be stagnant. It's going to be the same. So it's important that you do go and then change the velocity so it's not all the same. Best case when you're doing uh, software instruments is you're recording on a MIDI controller that you can actually carry over that velocity from your hands on the controller. So that's one thing uh, within your track is like performance and velocity uh, of your instrument. The second thing is melody. Your choice of melody, um, specifically your vocal melody and any other counter melody that you would have. Melody also creates dynamic because a melody um, goes up and down or, or sustains or is choppy. And if you have a vocal melody that just isn't exciting, then it will make your song less exciting. So this vocal melody isn't isn't anything special, but it does have dynamic on its own that we would if we just listen to the vocal um, scratch and the acoustic, it does hold its own just with these two instruments because the melody is dynamic. Every time we get too close, I'm breaking the rules, always scared of letting go. Wasn't like this way before. What can I do when you leave me in the cold? Wonder what we could have been Every time you post a picture you're in So your melody has to hold its own and a good test to any of this when you're producing is just have a listen to it with the main instrument and just see what, what, what are you feeling like? When do you get bored? Uh, that's always a good signal of if things are dynamic or exciting enough. Now let's touch on the melody of the harmonies. 
So the harmonies come in in the pre-chorus, but notice, and this is a good segue into uh, the next part about dynamics within each track, are using those tracks to transition into areas. So I have the harmonies here, but I'm also using the harmonies as a transition piece into the pre-chorus. So the lyric here where it says, Leave me in the cold. Leave me in the cold. And then the pre-chorus starts on. Wonder what? Wonder what. So having the harmonies also say the cold is a nice little signal that, okay, now we're in a, in a new section. Have a listen to that in context with the harmonies. I do when you leave me in the cold. Wonder what we could have. So it's a transition and then the harmonies continue adding a new uh, a new layer. Let's focus on the melody of the harmonies here. So this is a stack. So this one is a high harmony. That's really nice here of trying. Inch of trying. The high harmony is really lifting up there. It pops out. Now this is the high octave of the pre-chorus. Wonder what we could have been. To create those harmonies, I just recorded my voice, added some auto-tune. I'm also singing not so hard because I didn't want them to be so noticeable. So I'm just kind of like falsetto whispering as a recording, and that sits much nicer in your song if you do um, background harmonies like that. Notice the last half bar going into the, the chorus here, This, this little these regions. Notice that they pop out of the speakers a bit more. And I'm doing that, and how that's happening is on the, the harmonies track itself, is I'm taking off the reverb. I'm bypassing all that reverb. So the reverb is pushing them back a little bit behind the, the lead vocal. And then at the end, where all the instrumentation is out, I'm taking off the reverb, which is bumping up the harmonies and just creating a different, a different um, yeah, dynamic change for the listener. So it really pops out. Listen to that and see if you can hear it. I don't regret one single inch of trying. We just had bad timing. That's four ways to create dynamics in your song and ways that I usually use. Let me know what you guys think in a comment about this song or if you have any other things you do to create dynamics in your song. I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.